Welcome to another unit in this access course. This time I want to take a closer look on properties of those different fields. For this, I'm just going to switch from the datasheet view to the design view. Here we already saw what we discussed in an earlier unit. We have different data types, but we can, well, work into even more detail and set boundaries to what can actually be entered. The first way to go with, that's because it's the most flexible what I'm going to start with is the number format. And we have here the so-called field size. For numbers, the field size could be either bytes, integers, long integers, single, double, and so forth. Well, the most important aspect, long integer, the default version, similar to integers, that's whole numbers. With integers, roughly minus 32,000 to plus 32,000. With long integers, it's a lot of millions. So we have a large whole number which could be displayed. If, however, you want to display decimals, anything with decimals, you have to go with single, double, or with decimal. Whereas single and double is the standard decimal is the Microsoft or the Access version thereof. So let's see if I keep this as integer, as a whole number, what would happen if I enter something which does not fulfill this type of requirement. So I'm going to switch back to my data view. Well, here I have H. H usually is an integer, so there's not a big problem. But maybe someone goes there and says, yeah, I'm 66.8 years old. If I insert this, what I will get is actually the rounded number. So access will automatically round to the next highest or lowest number because it can only use whole numbers, only integers in this regard. Well, that's a nice way to assure that there are always integers, but it could still be possible that someone selects something which doesn't really make sense. So if you want to assure, for example, that the entry, the H, is always a positive integer, we would have to go a little bit further downwards and use the validation rule. With validation rule, I can actually insert which conditions the entry must fulfill. I could use the three dots on the right, or I could just write it here. If I go here, for example, get a lot of different expressions. For example, I could just add larger than zero, which would mean the entry needs to be larger than zero. Or I could use, for example, operators logical ones or comparisons ones. In this case, it would be comparison. Here I see exactly the same stuff I had before. I have also between or like or any other aspects. And between is an interesting example because if I want to say, yeah, someone should be older than zero, but he has to be definitely younger than 150, so I could use between 0 and 150, or I could go with needs to be larger than 0, then I switch to logical, select the and, and smaller than 150. So that's two ways to ensuring this. Well, let's stay with the simple larger than 0. So at this point, I just changed the requirement. I'm just going to save this. It tells me, okay, the integrity rules have changed. Do you want to check your entries? If I click yes, he checks all the table. At this point, there's no problem because we see here no actual error message whatever came up. So if we switch back, of course, all these two numbers are larger than zero. So let's say I miss took the entry and I'm going to write minus 55, press enter, and I see, okay, it's prohibited by a validation rule larger than zero. 
So I have to enter a value which actually fulfills this. If I just click somewhere else, get the same error message again. So it will not allow me to enter something which is not valid. So I have to change it to 55, to a positive value, and it works decently well again. And well, I can use a lot of additional validation rules there to ensure that what I'm going to enter is actually following what I need in my data table. Another aspect in the same context would be the field here called required, which allows me to ensure that the user has to enter something in this field before it could continue. So if this is as here as a default with no, could also be empty. If I would change this to yes, then every entry needs to have a value in the H field. This entry needs to be a whole number, an integer, which is positive. So that's a lot on the number format. Let's take a short look on the text format. Here we see we don't have the first part, the field size anymore. We have something called, okay, it's also field size, sorry, but it's not the format, it's just a number. This tells us how many different characters can be shown in this field. So in this case, you can have entries up to 255. That's a boundary for short text. Long text would be much more. For short text, it's basically 255. Similar to the number, I could also add different validation rules here. You see this in this case. Here, I don't have a validation rule. Here, I still have from earlier a validation rule, which in this case, however, doesn't make sense because it says larger than zero, but this is not a number field. So I could delete this, but I could, for example, enter something which looks a bit strange, like this, smaller and larger, like empty parentheses. This means it is not allowed to be empty. Well, okay, I could also again go with it's a required field, but this is a different way to work with text or it needs to be one of different possibilities. Well, we can do this much, much easier, but this is one way to use validation rules for texts. So that's almost everything on how I can check the data input. One final word on one other attribute which might come in handy, and that's the format. The format does not interfere in what you can enter, but it shows you different alternative how the entry is actually displayed. So with text, if I go here, and see there's actually not a lot to select from. That's because in this case, I would have to enter the format by which it needs to be entered on my own. In this case, with text, I would rather use those input masks, but that's a later topic. With numbers, actually makes much more sense. If I go on the same field for numbers, I see different types of formats. Generally, as a number as entered, I have fixed, so rounded up to a certain decimal. I can display this as currencies, as percentage values, or in scientific notations. It would still stay the same value. This is just on how the result is actually displayed. That would be the same thing with text. So the content would remain always the same. It's just shown in a different way. And that's why it's a little bit different actually than the input mass because the input mass limit what you can enter. And as I said, that's content for the next unit. So I hope you enjoyed it up to this point. I say goodbye and see you next time.